Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Chris Billum smith How are you doing, Chris? Yeah, very well, thanks, mate. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad at all. Um, some big Cruiserweight action this week, and I thought it'd be an opportune time to speak to yourself. Jordan Thompson against Jai Opataya. Big opportunity for Jordan Thompson, but a big step up for him as well. Yeah, for sure. But um, these opportunities, you know, I was an underdog against Lawrence, uh, and it was a huge opportunity for me. Um, and obviously I won that but you know Jordan's massive at the weight he's six foot seven he's got a huge frame and 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 Jai's not huge at the weight he's not a big cruiserweight um, so I think the size is a, a a big factor in this fight in terms of Jordan's chances off experience though obviously he's, he's less experienced he's not been at this level before Jai's obviously coming off the, a great win against Breedis but he has also been out the, the ring for, for a long time as well so um, yeah, he's, um, it's a, an intriguing fight and um, I think I'm, re I'm really interested to see how it unfolds. For Jordan, obviously the power you would say is his main advantage in this fight, is power and his size. If he's going to get the job done and claim the world title on Saturday night, is it important that he does the work early? Uh, I think you've got to establish something early on um, in, against Jai because he's a really good fighter, he moves his feet well. Um, and he can get into a rhythm and if you let him into that rhythm then you're going to be in trouble obviously you can always change it with with a punch but I think the it's important not to let him nick early round so you know you've got to start it's a 12 round fight it's 36 minutes so you've got to put the pressure on early um, from Jordan's point of view um, because Jai's a, a fantastic fighter and you can't let him get into that rhythm also on the card Ellie Stockney defending her world title for the first time you've been in the gym with Ellie for a long, long time now. How much have you seen her grow to this position? Yeah, I think it's two years today, actually, since she joined the gym. And um, yeah, she's, uh, she's a great character to have in the gym. She's uh, amazing. I don't think she does enough media to, to let it out and show people her uh, amazing personality, but fantastic fighter. She's um, come on leaps and bounds. I think since, the, um, since winning the title, she's really come on well. And really, like, she's punching really hard at the moment as well, and just, you can see her growing and it's great to see because she's only she's world champion but she still only had seven fights so it's important to keep developing and keep seeing those improvements she knows she's not the finished article she's not resting on winning a world title she wants more world title shots she wants to go through the weights and become numerous weights world champions so um that's a, a, exciting for for me to see and i'm watching it every day in the gym you mentioned there she's climbed to the top of three in very quick time really for her is it once you reach that stage, you've achieved your first goal. Do you have to sort of realign your thoughts? Because it's similar with you yourself, winning a world title. Do you sort of reassess the goals? Yeah, I think so. I think it's important. And I think that's important throughout. You know, I've, you have a, a goal of, of basically the very top, which is undisputed, obviously, in your weight or numerous weights, depending on, on where you're at. But I think that's the top. And then you just have to set the little goals in the meantime. For me, Commonwealth, British, European, each step, world. Then now for, it's, for me, it's unification. So same for Ellie. She's won a European. She's won a world. Now she's looking for unification fights after this weekend. But these fights matter. It's, uh, she's in with a tough girl. And um, she's got to, got to perform on Saturday. Other side of London, Caroline Dubois. Shane's obviously been going backwards and forwards all week. Tough. A tough assignment for Shane this week, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he's got to travel. Ellie's fight, uh, obviously, is on early. Um, and then she's got, he's got to whiz across to um, York Hall and do, the, uh, do Caroline's fight as well. So, uh, But it's, a, it's, it's good to be busy, but uh, it's not, not ideal, I don't think. But such professional gym, they'll get, uh, get the jobs done. You know, Ellie, Ellie will do her fight and Shane will whiz across and... Uh, Caroline's got people with her. Um, I think Barry McGuigan's going to be over there with her. So um, all, all corners are covered. For yourself, in terms of fight news, it looked a few weeks ago like the Lawrence Coley rematch may be on the cards. Now, maybe not so certain. What can you tell us about a fight news for yourself? Yeah, I've uh, got the same question. Uh, I'm grafting away, looking to fight in November. Um, so that's just always been my, my goal. Um, I don't care who it is, I just want to know who it is. Um, so at the moment for me, it's just about ticking away, letting the team do their job. I don't get involved in the talks of promoters. I let Jake McGuigan and Shane do, do the talks. They're fantastic at their job. No complaints how my career has been managed so far. Um, so I know they, they want the same for me as what I want for myself. So let them do the job and hopefully we'll get up some news in the next few weeks. Is it frustrating being in the gym and not having a, a date to sort of keep your eye on? 
Uh, not really, because I'll set a date in my head for sort of uh, November, and then I'll just train towards that. And if it gets delayed, it means I get more time training. So uh, that's just how I've always done it. I've, I've been in this position before. When I wasn't world champion, when you're just sticking away and you're looking towards a date without an opponent, it happens, it happens all the way through. Um, quite a lot when to begin with because you have a rough idea of a date, but you don't have an opponent to the last few weeks. So I'm experienced in it now. I'm a bit long in the tooth for it. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's easy enough to just to focus on the day-to-day -day tasks. Say so working towards November, do you expect it to be Lawrence Acoli or...? Well, yeah, I mean, I signed into the rematch clause um, from when I signed that contract seven weeks before the fight. My idea was, right, I've got to beat Lawrence in May and then I've got to beat him again before the end of the year. So um, that was always, always in my head. And that's sort of what I'm, um, you know, 90 percent towards. But I'm ready for, if it changes that uh, I can adapt. Final one for me. We've talked about it before, but can we get a prediction for Saturday night? Do you know what? It's, it's a tough one. I mean, I, I, if I had to go off of just previous fights, I, so far Jordan hasn't shown us enough, I don't think, to topple the best stop attire. But he's been out for a long time, and I mean, that's why I think it's a really intriguing fight. Um, and I probably haven't shown enough to people to believe that I'd beat Olorant Coley. So look, for, for Britain's sake, I hope Jordan does it. Um, I said to him earlier, go and... Go and rip up the script, mate, um, because that's what it's about. Um, being an underdog, I was a massive underdog. I was a three-to-one underdog, which is long odds in a, in a world title fight. And um, the, uh, I hope he can. I hope he can go and do the same for British boxing. It'd be great if we could unify two bits. Maybe React Paul can get his hands on a belt. Imagine having the three British world champions at one weight. That'd be phenomenal. Cheers for your time, Chris. Thank you.